Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Corinne Clemens. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for following me. This right here is Kareem in the morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to my show, Kareem in the Morning, right here, right now. So I would like to start off the show with breaking news. I've just now learned that star Sean Howard, a.k.a. Ray, from the Real Gatewives of Houston has died. I um, watched the video clip on the Nori Shaw Production YouTube page, and I was blown away. I mean, I'm just really like <sighs> unbelievable. It's like this is the third person now. We had Mom Pad, we had Miss James, and now we have Ray. So those are the actors from The Real Gay Wives of Houston. If you guys watch The Real Gay Wives of Houston, I always talk about them. They just had their season uh, uh, two, episode one, uh, six-year anniversary on the other day. Uh, now we just have learned that another actor, another star actor, Sean Howard, has died, joined into the heavens with... Charlie, who played Miss James, and the late Shirley Norwood, who played Mom Patton, who happened to be the one and only, uh, I love him, the Paul Norwood's mom. Okay? I can't believe this. I cannot freaking believe this. I, I mean, I know the video was posted on the 29th, and I was like, no. No, I was receiving emails and it was like, yo, did you see the video on the Nordy Shop Production uh, YouTube channel? And I was like, no, why, why? Go watch the video, I'll send you the link. And then I hear that Ray, aka Pasta, Sean Howard has died? What? Bitch, all I could say is Ray, Ray, Ray. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You guys got to go watch the Rogue Wives of Houston. Got to get your life. I can't believe he passed. Another one can join them. They're just up in the sky, just together in unity, celebrating, returning back to the Father from which they was made. Oh, boy. See, I, I could give y'all some of his parts, but it's like, y'all be like, well, what, what, what is he talking about, right? It's like, I heard how you outed Nelson to Yolanda. Oh, to slap you, okay? But um, I can't believe he died. I cannot believe he passed away. But this is Kareem in the morning. It's not going to be a long show. I wanted to talk about that, but I'm also want to bring in the, uh, let's go ahead and bring in that Kareem in the morning. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, shout out to StreamYard. You guys are amazing. Uh, without them, StreamYard, I would not be able to, with my ticker down at the bottom, uh, now it, you can do over, 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 okay, over 500 words so I can add some more content at the bottom. Thank you guys so much for that excellent uh, add-on. And then also the uh, PowerPoint 
uh, sharing, which I can show you guys in the background, which you guys can see. Thank you for joining. But I'm going to put that PowerPoint presentation together. I'm going to actually do it for your review. That yeah, will be back on Friday. So let's bring back the video. So yes, yeah, so couple of new couple of uh, story in the news as you guys see at the bottom. But I want to just go ahead and talk about this one because I did uh, spread light on this before. Maxwell sex trial is uh, continuing to resume on this day, and furthermore, as we know that Epstein killed himself in a facility, federal facility, but Kathleen Maxwell criminal sex abuse trial is set to uh, resume in its second day. And I can tell you that prosecutors are probably going to have a field time with this one. The allegations are pretty much uh, overwhelming. It almost sounds like when I um, hear about this case, I think about the R. Kelly case and when he was found guilty on uh, those sex abuse charges, the racketeering charges. So I'm pretty sure Maxwell, who is 59, who is in a federal jail, is definitely, definitely going to feel the heat when she is sitting at that table and they are putting every evidence that they have. And now that he's dead, okay, that's like probably more evidence because it's like he's not here to testify, he's not here to give any, or maybe I don't know if it's defamation, I don't know how much evidence is, but when I reported this breaking news back, back then in archives, I knew that the evidence that the prosecutor had was overwhelming and that they were going to, because they brought a lot of charges. I think I think the archive video uh, pulled up the, um, the indictment. They said, don't get excited. You've just been indicted. So yeah, so I, I pulled up the indictment and I, and I was reading an indictment form on uh, Maxwell and it was a lot of information. So we do know that Epstein died in jail. He, he took the, okay, uh, in 2019 while awaiting trial on sex abuse charges. Now, I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just only reporting this is because I reported this before, right? I, put, I reported this before and, oh, oh, my bad. I reported this before. And it was just really, really interested because I'm like, well, all these people are definitely, definitely in this moment. And they are actually like, you know, you can go to uh, Weinstein, you can think about Bill Cosby one. But with Bill Cosby, you know, they actually let him out of jail. But you got Weinstein, he's in jail, and they charge again, and then you had the whole it's just so much story. But then now, you know, you have uh, Trey Songs, and then you have um, now this lady, Maxwell, who pleaded not guilty. Uh, but before I continue, let me just go ahead and run my uh, warning. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bring me up. Warning. Warning. The views expressed and opinions of this program are just the views and opinions. Don't take it of this series, but I will warn you, your discretion is advised. This channel and these videos are not meant for children under the age of 13. Okay, so I actually put that there. I'm like, wait a minute, what's what, what, what going on, man? Like, why you gotta, uh, why you gotta put that up? But anyway, so I had to roll that. So yeah, so she basically pled not guilty to eight counts of sex trafficking and other crimes, including two perjury charges that will be tried at a later date. Get this. She faced up to 80 years in 
prison if convicted on all counts. I'm telling you, man, this is ridiculous. And I could tell you, they're saying that uh, Epstein and, and Maxwell, the late Epstein and Maxwell, lived between 1994, allegedly, and 2004, or allegedly, thanks to T.S. Madison, uh, the period in which prosecutors say Maxwell lured four underage girls to the late Epstein's, uh, uh, oh, okay. So that's allegedly, right? Then prosecutor says that Maxwell lured the four underage girls to Epstein and that she frequently shuttled Epstein and guesses between Epstein's property in New York, Florida, allegedly, New Mexico, Paris, and private islands and the Caribbean. So that is something that the prosecutor has, which they can prove that this happened and without reasonable doubt and find her guilty. But it depends. Depend the defendant in F scene made young girls believe that their dreams could come true. And they were exploiting kids and they were trafficking kids for sex. So those are the charges that was brought up against her. Okay. The next I'm going to talk about Jesse Smollett. Now, Jesse Smollett. I was hearing and I'm just really shocked at that the fact that Ray, unbelievable, is is gone. Sean. Oh, we don't talk, right? I can't believe he died. I just really can't believe he died, man. Wow. Shout out to his family. Let's have a moment of silence for Sean Albert. Thank you. And shout out to the Paul Nova, man. You do awesome work and awesome, awesome, awesome writing with you and your mom. I really hope that your mom, I, I really hope that your mom had some time and she left a, 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 a gym out to the social media world and portraying Mom Pat and, and Ms. James portraying, uh, uh, well, Charlie portraying Ms. James and Sean portraying Ray and that they were actually lovers together. Like, that is so crazy. It's like, if you was to come back, pull me up. If you, if you was to come back with an uh, episode or season to end it off, I know the perfect, perfect script. It would be that Miss James and Ray, they actually, I don't know, like, you got to kill them off. You got to kill them off. They died. The the characters is gone. Maybe they just flew like they they moved like, or they died or the characters died like we already know like, oh God I don't know it would be very hard to even write that because you got to do Mama Patty, wow. Mama Pat killed Miss James. It was a suicide affair with Ray. Unbelievable! Oh my God! I can't believe it. Oh my God, I cannot believe that Ray is dead. And you know, when I watched The Real Gay Wives of Houston, uh, and, and this is after my Pat died and 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 Ms. James died, it was like, I always seen the fact like, I don't want to be with you. Why? I don't want to be with you. Why? It's like, he just was like, Ray, we took my character. And their relationship in the real gay wives of Houston was really like how you would actually see people not now, not I mean not them now, uh dealing with and probably even worse. And we see Miss James was a counselor that was helping other people and then you know dealing with the public she also had to deal with her personal issues and that was her husband giving her hiv sleeping around cheating she wanted a divorce and that was right so i'm just really oh, they say uh the best always goes like it's, oh, the best always dies and these characters they really put these human beings the late these people 
put their heart in portraying the characters of my bad Miss James and Brack. So shout out to the late Shirley Norwood. Shout out to Charlie and shout out to Sean Howard. Okay, so my next story, I want to just go ahead and finally go ahead and talk about it. Uh, Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett, his trial is beginning in Chicago for all we know. Well, for that saga that went down, well, I don't even know if it was called a saga. It was something that happened that was brought to the social media world back in 2019 of January. And we know that from there into now, the person who we know as Jesse Smollett, who played on the show Empire, has not come forward and talking about this case. And we know that we have the Austin Durham brothers, and we also have the superintendent of the police department of Chicago, former police department of Chicago, who was suing him for the investigation that had that they took to, you know, investigate that happened to be allegedly, because it's allegedly a false. Okay, so let's get into it. All right, so testimony is set to begin in the trial of ex Empire Jesse Smollett, who prosecutors say staged a homophobic and racist attack in Chicago. And defense attorney says that a real victim of a real crime. So they're actually going on the fact that this happened. They are going on the fact that Jesse Smollett was attacked in Chicago on that day when he was going to get a foot long subway sandwich. Okay. And with all the evidence, now I don't know if they ever learned from this. I don't know if they ever learned from this, but pull me up. I don't know if people ever learn from this, but when you are looking at factors and cases, especially in your own, and I don't know if you're just a habitual person or a habitual offender or a person who just continues to commit crimes, right? Because this guy is definitely, definitely not a newbie. Okay, he is, and from his uh, Wikipedia, we've read about previous stuff. So he's not a newbie. So with that being said, you would think that you would learn your lesson and be rehabilitated from the fact that, okay, if I committed a crime, I'm not going to commit a crime again because I have me and to be a productive citizen in society. You know, you're an actor, you know your thing. So allegedly... Right? Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Uh, allegedly, they're saying that he was charged with falsely disorderly. And I I reported about this case. I reported about this case, uh, you know, before. And I was really disgusted because I was saying that how in the hell that you have a person who is a citizen and who committed a crime that a lot of people in jail right now who is in there for the same crime he committed, right? Not only that, this man also committed a federal crime too. Remember, he sent a letter to the studio where he was at and it had stickmen on it. Remember, that was something that the Federal Bureau of investigations was looking to swap to find DNA and fingerprints on the envelope and if it was going to match this guy and if it does match 
this guy that is more evidence because it's a federal crime because he committed it due to the parcel service. He mailed a letter to the studio depicting what happened to him. Okay? We already know that there was a video showing the Austin brothers who was in the warehouse purchasing these items. We also noticed that the that police body worn camera shows him asking them to cut off body worn camera image. Okay, so the third eye never lies with him having a rope around his neck. It was so tight, like it was like, was he acting in his home? Like literally, he had a rope wrapped around his neck, bro. Okay. We also know that from the evidence that is all on social media, because you know, we had uh, people who were uh, looking at the video, uh, detecting body language, and the way he was talking to the public when he gave that dumbass speech on national television, okay, right around February, February of Valentine's Day, telling the world with his good friend Robin Robbins from ABC, Good Morning America, lies. And he was saying that he was beat by somebody that was from mega from you know trump and you know they had a mega hat and they had the mega and they just definitely threw substance in his face and they wrapped around a rope around his neck and allegedly they let him go with the rope around his neck because the body worn camera showed him with the rope around his neck and we learned that the uh substance that they threw on him was uh not pee uh, I think it was bleach or something, okay? But hold on. Let's go back to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Let's go back to that letter that was sent to the to them or down is in the hands of the FBI. Uh, it depicts everything that happened to him. Okay? So that's evidence. Then you get to the Austin Durham brothers, who definitely says that uh, we didn't do it. Then they saying we did do it. And then here's the check that proves that we did it or we was going to do it because the check, allegedly the check, the $30,000 check that he paid to do it uh, to these people who happen to be uh, formal actors on the show Empire. Or we now know in a couple court public opinions that these are his workout buddies, these are his sex buddies, or probably coke buddies. I don't know what type of buddies is it. Yeah, that makes me think about that too. Rock buddies, stick buddies, bubble buddies. This is great. Shout out to SpongeBob SquarePants. All right. But yeah. So they were saying that they had said in a defamation that they filed lawsuits against the police department and they filed lawsuits against somebody else because of defamation of character. And they lost their business because, you know, when you see them, they not reported them on the story, uh, on the show, uh, you know, several times saying that, you know, they work out bodies, they said they lost their business and that they were probably, you know, really upset because they lost everything and that they, also hold on the last news that i remember reading and sharing with you guys is that they were actually looking to get evidence out of police custody and i think that was firearms bleach and uh cell phones and a mask or a cap something like that okay but this is evidence that probably is going to be in this case Right. And I don't know if this case is open to the public, but I could tell you that we already know. We already have so much. It's like so much happening with technology now and day. You know, you're tried in the public court of opinion right here in social media world. You have me, like people like me, like citizen journalists and bar bloggers bloggers and people out there because I'm telling you they ran crazy crazy from the breakfast club to 
the highest blogger. Uh, they ran crazy. I mean, the football players, the basketball players. I mean, I, the rappers, the music guy. I mean, they had so much. It's still online to this day what they felt about this bullshit ass story. And you are actually, you ain't even take a plea. There's no more plea deals, baby boy. It is now trial because once they find you guilty, which they are going to find you guilty because of the evidence that they have against you, it's overwhelming. Okay. And this, you're not the real victim. I would say the Austin Devon brothers is the real victim. You guys got to follow social media on this trial. I don't want to make this a long video. I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, give you more information to let you know that they are really serious about uh, getting this man acquitted of these charges. And at one point, they was they wanted to dismiss this case. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not at all. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here with me on Kareem in the Morning. Again, shout out to the Howard family. Shout out to the Paul for the passing of another cast member from the Real Gay Wives of Houston. And that is Ray, a.k.a. Sean Howard, a.k.a. Pastor. Yo, I am Kareem Clemens. I'll see you guys very soon. For more information, you guys can visit the blog page. Have a good one. Thank you.